After King was killed, white people feared for where this movement of Kings was going. You had the explosions with the riots, and then you had this group of young uh, black activists in California, the Black Panthers, and the thing that set them apart was they were armed themselves. And a lot of white people assumed, well, they're arming themselves, they must be arming themselves to shoot us. And so they were very fearful of the Panthers. Uh, and uh, after King, sometime after that, after the King, the Portland's campaign, and some other things, the New York Times sent me to California to cover the Black Panthers. And they, they, my editor said, as editors always did then with regard, with, you know, they say, well, the Panthers are black, you're black, you can go out there and get on the inside. I always took that to be an insult. It was like saying, <laughs> it's not reporting, it's just you're black and be out there and hang out and you can get the story. Uh, no, I was an, I was a very good reporter. I knew how to get on the inside. I knew how to get on the inside with anybody. I, you know, there were very few stories that I couldn't cover. But as it happened, my assignment sent me to California. They wanted to know where are these guys going? Who are they? And where are they going? What are they trying to do? And uh, who's, where are they getting their money? And uh, <laughs> this, all of these things. So I went to California and I began to report on the Panthers right away. I started off writing, I think the very first story I wrote about them was on the front page. Uh, uh, and uh, so they then, at the New York Times, did something they'd never done as long as they had that paper. They named me their first black, the first black person to be a national correspondent. So I relocated in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area where I would have access and worked out of the San Francisco Bureau of the New York Times and I covered the Black Panthers. That was my principal assignment. I mean, I had to do other things and uh, we had a big piece of territory from, from Nevada uh, to the east to all the way up to Pacific Northwest and that, but my principal thing was to cover the Panthers. I spent an extraordinary amount of time doing that. And as it happened, I was covering the Panthers, oh, for about like a year, over, over a year, maybe 12, 14, I'd say 14, 16 months maybe or something like that. And one day the FBI calls and they want me to be an underwork, to be a spy on the Black Panthers. I was quite stunned, but I explained to them, no, I can't do that. But at that time, there was a lot of clashes between the Panthers and the police and everything, and I sent this agent over the telephone. I said, but not only can I not do it, I can't even have this conversation with you because you never know about these conversations, who's listening or what's what. So I wanted to be very upfront about it, that no, I'm a reporter, and that's, that's all I can do. But I said, uh, why would you call me? And they said, well, you're reading your stories in the newspaper. Well, I'm saying if I read my stories in the paper, you're getting a lot out of me being there anyhow. And I wouldn't do it. And I thought that was the end of it, but it was really uh, just the beginning of a, uh, a very tumultuous period in my life because the FBI, after hounding me for about a month to... Uh, take on this undercover role. When I refused, they said, okay, if you're not going to do it, they're, they're going to jam me up. And they that's what they did. They uh, then got a subpoena for me to be the star witness against the Black Panthers before a federal grand jury. And, uh, you know, I was, whew, I was devastated because I thought for the first time, thing is, is that, you know, when you do, when you come out there, especially at that period, I remember that one, Kathleen Cleaver, one of the first things she said to me was, wait a minute, you're telling us that the New York Times sent you, you all the way out here and you to cover the Black Panthers, I don't believe it, who are you? And uh, so then they used to give me a lot of heat about, you are a cop, aren't you? And no, I'm a reporter, and this is what I do, and judge me by what you read in the newspapers. I wrote a lot of articles on them. 